Hi, now that the powder coat has been applied for the base color, I'm going to do the silk screening to apply the art and the text. Here's the basic things I need for silk screening. A platform of some kind to mount the petal in the screen. I just make mine out of a couple pieces of wood air nailed together. Hinges that hold the screen on and allow it to be flipped up. A squeegee to spread the ink and push it through the screen. Several types of inks can be used. I'm using a durable enamel. And of course, the screen itself. I'm not making my own screens. I pay a local shop for that. I just give them the artwork, specify the mesh count, and then I'll be using an enamel because the type of ink can make a difference in how the screen gets made. A higher mesh count allows for smaller lines and thinner text. I'm using a 230 mesh count. The benefit of silkscreen is that it's fast, durable, consistent, and cheaper when doing a lot of petals, plus it gives a professional result. The cost is really just in the screen and the ink. A screen of this size is going to cost about 50 bucks, and with care, it can be used over and over again for a long time. A supply of enamel ink to do several hundred petals will cost about 30 bucks. It's not cost effective to do it this way for only a few copies, but getting up into 30 or 40 petals, there's a definite advantage to not only cost but speed as well. The price also keeps going down per petal the more I do, whereas with other techniques the cost stays relatively flat. I can even make separate screens to apply two or more colors and it's still faster and more cost effective. After making the platform, the first thing is to clamp the screen on and check it for height above the printed surface. The screen needs to be about a sixteenth of an inch above the printed surface or about the width of one quarter. I got really close to the height I needed and I just taped some coins down to the surface to raise the enclosure to the exact height. Next you want to align the enclosure under the screen. Printing alignment marks directly on the screen with your artwork is a good idea. You can always use masking tape to cover those lines up so they don't let any ink through. I didn't do that with this one, which does make it a little tougher to line up. Once in place, I'll air nail a couple blocks of wood around the enclosure to create a cradle. I'll use some masking tape to protect the finish, which also tightens up the fit, as well as allowing me to make minor alignment adjustments by just adding tape to one side or another as needed. Also, I tape up the inner edge of the screen just to keep any ink from running through there. To start the printing, I pour a bit of ink onto the screen just above the art. As you can see, the ink I'm using is pretty thin, which is another reason why I chose a higher mesh count screen. This amount of ink will do at least 50 of my petals. It really doesn't take that much. To me, the most important part of doing the print is the flood stroke. Without applying any pressure, I draw the squeegee over the art and coat it in a thin layer of ink. The ink is now loaded into the open areas of the screen and is ready for the print. Without putting any additional ink into the area, I press down with the squeegee to make contact with the closure below and do an even pressured stroke across the surface. This one's looking good, but if I do see a problem, there's still a chance I can fix just a small area or do a second pass over the whole surface. The worst case, if the print is really messed up, I can wipe the whole thing down gently with a clean cloth and a touch of mineral spirits and do it all over after the spirits evaporate. Once I'm in the swing of it, the process goes pretty fast. There's a bit of learning curve to finding that right touch. The most important thing I found is getting the flood stroke correct and having just enough ink loaded so that the print will come out clean. Too much ink sitting on top or pushing excess ink back over the screen during the print stroke and the image is more likely to bleed. The enamel stays wet for a couple of hours and should really be left to cure for about 12 hours. I usually let them go for about 24 hours before doing any next steps. In the next video, I'll affix the LCD bezel and begin installing components, so join me for that one.